Okay, well, I stopped it then. Good morning. Today is March 10th, 2020. And <clears throat> I've never done a Facebook streaming live like this. I'm going to do it uh, maybe for the next several days. And, uh, you know, the times, they are a-changing, right? A little bit. Just a little bit. Things are getting a little intense. And it's uh, making its way right down home to you. To your local grocery store cashier. Wearing gloves. Maybe even wearing a mask. People living in fear and dying in fear. Dying in fear. The Bible says in the last days men's hearts shall fail them for fear. I wonder what kind of uh, increase in the rise of heart attacks has happened, heart attack and stroke has, has gone on since we get headlines like this. Remember the uh, fire engine ambulance red they love to put on, on the headlines. Italy quarantines entire country. Wow. I'm talking mandatory vaccines, I'm hearing things like this. All right, so the big issue these days is the uh, pandemic, the alleged pandemic that's going on. There's a lot of um, speculation as to what it is, whether it's even real or not, where it came from, what the purpose is. Is it a cover-up of some kind for 5G and, and vaccinations that went went wildly wrong? You know, I don't believe, just like 9-11, this, this was a planned event. Okay, so if you just went flying out of the back of the wagon, have a nice day. At any rate, I'm not going to go through news articles and things like that too much. I just want to say that um, uh, I wanted to share a minute as you have your coffee, have your tea, have your orange juice, eat your Cheerios or whatever. I, I'm going to just want to encourage you, all my brothers and all my friends, uh, to not be afraid to whistle through the graveyard. Whistle a happy tune. Nothing to be afraid of. Especially if you abide in Christ, you have no fear of death. And all of their machinations to bring gloom, doom, and anxiety upon you, upon your mind, to, to disrupt critical thinking, to disrupt your peace, to rob you of your peace, not disrupt it. Rob you of your peace is a machination for control, for mind control. Okay. <clears throat> Believe it and receive it. Doubt and go without. Anyway, so here we've got stocks fall most since 2008. Well, you know, they've, they've also... Uh, if you think like back in uh, 2011, the S&P was around 1,100 or something like that, and it's gone up to well over 3,000 in the last decade. You know, what about the people that were long those futures? Well, they're taking profits. And a lot of things that go on in the markets disguise what the smart money's doing. It's called never letting a crisis go to waste. It's called uh, hiding what you're doing. Anyway, this isn't a market lesson. I don't want to get into all that. What I do want to do is just talk momentarily about, um, let's see here. Uh, farmers face crisis. Hundreds are dying by suicide. Yeah, that's sad. Even more U.S. soldiers are dying by suicide, but we don't hear that that often. 22 a day. And that number, plus or minus, um, why is that? Yet, thank you for your service. Oh, really? Doesn't seem like some of them are too proud of what they've been doing, or who they've been doing it for, how they realize their lives have been uh, prostituted. Sad to say. Did you go flying on the back of the wagon again? Okay, we'll get to the good stuff. As coronavirus spreads... Warnings become more urgent for the elderly and frail. All my brothers and all my friends, aren't we all elderly and frail? I think we are. We're breath away. Warnings, warnings. Well, there's one warning, and that is uh, 
we live, we die, and death none is it, right? And there comes a day, there comes a time when we're going to face the Maker. And we are either dead in our sins or we have salvation in Christ. He covers our sins. And, and that's it. It's really just that simple. That's the real, that's the warning. That's the only warning. All right. I thought this was interesting. Bible says that there will be pestilences in the last days. No stuff. It also says earthquakes, wars, rumors of wars. Well, we hear that all the time, right? And um, here we got the 10th quake felt off Northern California. Odd patterns forms. Yeah, there's always been earthquakes, right? But <clears throat> they uh, they seem to be quite on the increase. And there's some some places online you can go and, and see those um, see those numbers. But then you might argue from unbelief, mind you, that well, it's always been this way. We're just able to hear about it more. Okay, sure, that's true. But it also means that you don't know whether they've been on the increase. But let's say they haven't. Let's say it's always been the same volume of, of earthquakes per diem, uh, per annum, for millennia. Well, now you're hearing about it. Now you've got the information. Why are you being shown that the earth groans? The earth is basically groaning for the revelation of the sons of God, Bible say, right? Okay, so maybe I've got one viewer left. Um, but these things are important, you know. Wars, rumors of wars. Take heed that no man deceive you. Well, how do you do that? Well, the most effective way is to know the truth. As it said, and you've always heard, the truth shall set you free. Set you free from what? Lies. And the world is full of lies. Every man's a liar. Only God be true. So let's move right into it. Um, this article, by the way, I'm sure I really like this uh, this little visual here. It goes up till midnight. Then what's happening after midnight? It goes till one or two. I don't know what the choice was in uh, not putting the other numbers on here. It's not important. But um, this guy writes, by the way, from a lot of unbelief, he says, of course, we don't know if COVID-19, that's the coronavirus, is one of the pestilences that Jesus was referring to. But in recent days, it has greatly distressed me to see so many Christians attempting to downplay the severity of this virus. Okay, so this guy goes on to ramp up um, the fear-mongering, but he also is sowing the seeds of unbelief that oh, this, this, this may not be last days type of pestilence as well. Jeez, I mean, I'll, every year, what, what do we have? Ebola. SARS, that's the uh, respiratory disease that was to be afraid of. Just like this one, you saw all kinds of uh, Asians wearing masks. And I think the bird flu, same deal. Swine flu, uh, you name it. AIDS, what else? The uh, flesh-eating disease. How many, how many things, um, how many of these things have you been met with dire gloomy faces from the news tower telling you to be afraid you know well anyway moving on so what I want to do is um, not gonna be much to look at here on the screen I'm not gonna fiddle with that but I'm, I want to to, uh, to tell you <sighs> That afflictions, though they seem severe, and mercy are often sent. Now that may be your personal affliction. Or we can look at the you know, I've I've prayed, it's like, you know, because I can go into unbelief very quickly. I can I can go back to my very carnal ways, you know, and my unbelief and not think thinking I've got all the time in the world and just take take um, my pleasure, earthly earthly delights, you know. Not thinking that the end may come, you know, to not be living circumspectly, to not keeping my quote unquote oil lamp full, to keeping my garments clean, that kind of thing, you know. <clears throat> so in moments of clarity, I prayed, you know, Lord, help me to realize what time it is. Help me to number my days, you know, to know where I am in the stream of time and in the stream of time in my life. 
I've lost a lot of friends here, people. I've been to the edge, and there I look down. You know, I've seen a lot of people that I was very close to. They're gone off the face of the earth. And uh, as sobering as that may be, it just fades away, doesn't it? It fades away. All these moments of clarity we get, we go back. And no wonder, you know, we're inundated with <laughs> fluoride, bad air, processed foods, electromagnetic radiation, all kinds of frequencies passing through our bodies and our minds, noise, distractions, pretty girls, you know. That one particular from men, well, I'm sure it's as much a distraction now that I think about it for women. You know, everywhere you go, there's always scantily, led, scantily clad, seductive women, um, titillating men, young men, old men, married men, you name it, making, you know, just pushing those buttons, um, stimulating them in their mind. And it's a natural thing, but they're just, you know, men are very visual. But then there's the aspect of it's inundating women, too. We hear it all the time, if you pay attention, women complaining how that after 50, they're basically dismissed from the table, that uh, you know youth and beauty are their value, that their, their worth and, and um, beauty is measured against the standard that is put forth on every checkout aisle, on the magazine covers, every commercial, every sitcom, every movie, Everything having to do with, with uh, putting up the face of woman today. It's always been that way since we've had the mass media. All right. Moving on. Um, in Job 14, it says, man, is born of, man that is born of a woman is a few days and full of trouble. He comes forth like a flower and, and is cut down. He flees also as a shadow and continues not. So whether you come forth like a flower and live joyfully, you're still going to meet the end. And whether you run in fear all your life, that's a shadow. Eventually, you can't run anymore. What shall we say then, all my brothers and all my friends? We're all going to meet the same end. Do you want to go through life afraid? Or do you want to go through life in peace? Even if you don't believe. Take a crumb from the master's table and, and have a little peace. Okay, you're going you're gonna to meet, not, I'm not the master, but you know what I mean. You're going to meet your end. And it'd be better to go through this life whistling through the graveyard. If you don't know what that means, look it up. Uh, then fearing the inevitable, fearing anxiety. It, it wreaks havoc on your mind, your relationships, your productivity, your sleep, your health. It's so insidious. We bl we blithely call it stress. Oh, I'm stressed out. Oh, I got a lot of stress. Oh, I'm, I've got anxiety. Oh, I had an anxiety attack. What, however you want to term it. it. It's not just this little thing that afflicts us. It's a major, major dis-ease. It's a disease. Look at it like that. How many people do you know? We're worried about, not not me, but people are worried and worried, wearing masks and, and buying up toilet paper and uh, spraying Lysol on their tongue and gargling with bleach, you name it, right? Staying away from people. And uh, the fact is that before this came around, how many people do they talk with every day that are afflicted with the disease of anxiety and fear? It laces all their, their speech. It's everything. And, hey, guilty as charged here. I, I got the problem. I'm not walking around lollipops, unicorns, and uh, pots of honey. I, I don't know. <laughs> stretching here, you know? Anyway, so let's let's get right into what I... What I opened up this video for today I want to read to you from Psalm 91 this these are the days to meditate on this psalm okay 
and I want to open it up for you. Maybe I'm going to do a couple verses a day, but I'm going to I'm going to start with just two. I've already gone longer than I intended. It opens up. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. So I'm going to read for you. I didn't write this. In fact, this is uh, um, it's very old, old commentary, but it's it's so it's uh, it's like apples of gold and settings of silver. How about that? Their words fitly spoken. He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High. The blessings here promised are not for all believers, but for those who live in close fellowship with God. Every child of God looks toward the inner sanctuary and the mercy seat, yet all do not dwell in the most holy place. They run to it at times and enjoy occasional approaches, but they do not habitually reside in the mysterious presence. Those who through rich grace obtain unusual and continuous communion with God so as to abide in Christ and Christ in them become possessors of rare and special benefits which are missed by those who follow afar off and grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Into the secret place, those only come who know the love of God in Christ Jesus and those only dwell there to whom to live is Christ. To them the veil, the veil is rent, the mercy seat is revealed, the covering cherubs are manifest, and the awful glory of the Most High is apparent. These, like Simeon, have the Holy Ghost upon them, and like Anna, they depart not from the temple. They are the courtiers, courtiers of the great king, the valiant men who keep watch around the bed of Solomon, the virgin souls who follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Elect out of the elect, they have, quote, attained under the first three, unquote. I don't know where that's from, attained under the first three. And shall walk with their Lord in white, for they are worthy. Sitting down in the august presence chamber, where shines the mystic light of the Shekinah, they know what is to be raised up together. They know what it is to be raised up together and to be made to sit together with Christ in the heavenlies. And of them, it is truly said that their conversation is in heaven. Special grace like theirs brings with it special immunity. And that's what we're talking about, right? Immunity from the disease of fear, the disease of, of actually the noisome pestilence, right? That, that is, we're being inundated with constantly. Outer court worshipers little know what belongs to the inner sanctuary, or surely they would press on until the place of nearness and divine familiarity became theirs. Those who are the Lord's constant guests shall find that he will never suffer any to be injured within his gates. He has eaten the covenant of salt, excuse me, he has eaten the covenant of salt with them and is pledged for their protection. <clears throat> and continuing this latter half of verse one, shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And here's how it's broken down. The omnipotent Lord will shield all those who dwell with him they shall remain under his care as guests under the protection of their host. In the most holy place, the wings of the cherubim were the most conspicuous objects, and they probably suggested to the psalmist the expression here employed. Those who commune with God are safe with him. No evil can reach them. That means you. No evil can reach you. Doesn't mean we won't have trouble, right? For the outstretched wings of his power and love cover them from all harm. This protection is constant. They abide under it. It is all sufficient, for it is the shadow of the Almighty, whose omnipotence will surely screen them from all attack. No shelter can be imagined at all comparable to the protection of Jehovah's own shadow. The Almighty himself is where his shadow is, and hence those who dwell in his secret place are shielded by himself. What a shade in the day of noxious heat. I like that. <laughs> what a refuge in the hour of deadly storm. Communion with God is safety. The more closely we cling to our Almighty Father, the more confident may we be. Now, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. 
To take up a general truth and make it our own by personal faith is the highest wisdom. It is but poor comfort to say, quote, the Lord is a refuge, unquote. But to say he is my refuge is the essence of consolation. Those who believe should also speak, I will say. For such bold avowals honor God and lead others to seek the same confidence. And that's what I'm doing here today, hopefully. You know, I wake up. I flip open the uh, this this ugly rag, or and you name it. There's plenty of plenty of places to go for the bad news, you know. And um, if I didn't have the understanding and wisdom that I've been granted over the years, framed in the wisdom of the Word of God, I don't know. I'd be racked with illness or dead of a heart attack by now. Because of all the, all the stuff coming at us all the time, all the uncertainty. You know. Uh, well, I'll move on here. <clears throat> I've already taken up enough of our time. Men are apt enough to proclaim their doubts, and even to boast of them. And that's what I was talking about earlier. You know, everywhere we go, people are riddled with the disease, and it laces their speech that they proclaim their doubts and boast of them. Talk about what they're worried about today. I do it. I'm sure I did it yesterday, and I'll probably do it today. No matter how great, I'm trying to get off to a good start. All right? So, just so you know, even though I'm trafficking in these words and in these truths, doesn't mean I'm uh, proficient continuously in them. Indeed, there's a party nowadays of the most audacious pretenders to culture and thought who glory in casting suspicion upon everything. Ooh, that's a zinger. Yeah. I cast suspicion on a lot of things. I'll have to think about that one. Um, Hence it becomes the duty of all true believers to speak out and testify with calm courage to their well to their own well grounded reliance upon their God. Let others say what they will, be it ours to say of the Lord, He is our refuge. That's what I'm saying to you. It's how I can quote whistle through the graveyard of this world. You know, the world's on fire. And it's full of deception and mind control. And how can I keep, a, you know, other than sticking your head in the sand, which is what most people choose to do to have some semblance of sanity, um, how can you be aware, informed, know the, the hour of the time, and still have a spring in your step? Well, when the Lord is your refuge, nothing can touch you. Say if he allows it, right? But what we say, we must prove by our actions. We must fly to the Lord for shelter, and not to an arm of the flesh. The bird flies away to the thicket, and the fox hastens to its hole. Every creature uses its refuge in the hour of danger. And even so, in all peril or fear, or fear of peril, let us flee unto Jehovah, the eternal protector of his own. Let us, when we are secure in the Lord, rejoice that our position is unassailable, for he is our fortress as well as our refuge. You know, we all look at glorious castles of old times, and some many are set upon a hill, many have moats, um, they have, uh, what, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, high and thick walls that are ominous and foreboding. Um, unapproachable really unassailable think about that image of a castle in your mind and think about the Lord being where you can run and be safe inside no moat poor Calise, I think that's how you say that it's a word I haven't come across in a while drawbridge wall battlement and dungeon gotta look that one up could make us so secure as we are when the attributes of the Lord of hosts environ around us. Behold, this, and, and let's think about the attribute, attributes of the Lord of hosts. He is your provider. He is your creator. He is your comforter. He is your healer. And there's more. Behold this day the Lord is to us instead of walls and bul bulwarks. Our ramparts defy the leaguered hosts of hell. Foes in flesh and foes in ghostly guise, meaning flesh and spirit, are alike balked by of their 
excuse me, balked of their prey, when the Lord of hosts stands between us and their fury, and all other evil forces are turned aside. Walls cannot keep out the pestilence, but the Lord can. You think about that. As if it were not enough to call the Lord his refuge and fortress, he adds, quote, My God, I in him, my God, I in him I will I trust. That's a typo there. My God in him will I trust. Unquote. Now we can say no more, quote, My God means all and more than all that heart can conceive by way of security. It was most meet that he should say, In him will I trust, since to not deny faith to such a one were willful wickedness and wanton insult. He who dwells in an impregnable fortress naturally trusts in it. And shall, shall not he who dwells in God feel himself well at ease and repose his soul in safety? Yeah, it means we need to act like it. <laughs> oh, that we more carefully... Excuse me. Oh, that we more fully carried out the psalmist's resolve. We have trusted in God. Let us trust him still. He has never failed us. We could stop right there. Let's think about, I think about my life. I Many times I'll lie awake and I'm, my mind is racing, worrying and this and that. At what age am I now? I look back at my life. Here I am. All the storms I've been through. All the things I've been through. Unbelievable. But guess what? The Lord's never failed me. He has never failed us. Why then should we suspect him? Oh, that's that's a hard one. Yeah, have you ever been suspicious of God? Is he going to come through? Is he listening? Does he know? Does he care? To trust in man is natural to fallen nature. To trust in God should be as natural to regenerated nature. Where there is every reason and warrant for faith, we ought to place our confidence without hesitancy or wavering. Yeah, the operative word there is ought to. We ought to. Dear reader, pray for grace to say, in him will I trust. Not in being more informed by videos on the coronavirus. Not in being more aware of what the hoax is or what the, what the conspiracy is. Not in... Um, surgical masks and not in rubber gloves latex gloves not in Lysol not in hoarding toilet paper <laughs> not in staying away from people no in him we should trust all my brothers and all my friends alright thanks for coming out I hope that was helpful to you and um, I do want to reiterate that uh, afflictions though they seem severe and mercy are often sent, meaning many things. But one thing is, all these pestilences, all these things were being shown in our face. We should, we are to be thankful in all things. We can thank God. We've got all this stuff coming at us. Instead of, and I, I need to think about this. Instead of being like, oh, look at the, you know, mind control, the doom and gloom. Thank God, they're quickening me to the times we're living in. We should be looking up. When I'm tempted to go this way or that, I should remember the times we're living in. You know? So easily do I forget. And maybe you do too. And uh, make a great day. Thanks for coming out.